Hi gardeners! So this is the video about pruning. Um, I am including, I hope, some time-lapse video showing me pruning this shrub behind me and another one over in a different area of my garden. Um, so I hope that, that you can watch kind of some examples and I will refer to those examples throughout this video. So the first, the first thing we need to talk about with pruning, there are four, four basic things. Safety, shape, angle of cut, and location of cut. Um, so we'll get into the other three here in a minute, but we're going to start with safety. Um, and safety also has four components. So when you're pruning, there's a couple of things you want to check for before you even start. And the first thing is wildlife. It is possible in an overgrown bush, for example, that you might find bees or wasps who have made a home in that overgrown bush or other wildlife. Um, snakes in my area might hide under certain bushes. Um, so you just want to kind of check the area, make a lot of noise to chase anything like uh, squirrels that might be angry at you for startling them or snakes um, out of the area. Sorry about the neighbor dogs, they're just noisy. Shh. I'm sorry. Um, so the, the next thing after that is just uh, checking kind of the environment in general. So for example, right now we have a decent amount of wind. Um, it actually gets a lot windier than this here. This is just sort of a breezy evening, but um, wind can make it really hard to prune safely, especially if you're talking about a tree, for example. Um, stuff can just smack you in the face. Um, you also want to think about what it is you're pruning. How springy are the branches, stuff like that. It is possible, especially with electric or gasoline motorized um, equipment, that things will be tossed up and you could get something in your eye. So eye protection is good. Gloves are good to wear. As a general rule, I recommend them all the time. Um, do I use them all the time? Yes on a non-windy day with smaller um, bushes and things like that where I can use just my smaller tools and I'm not using any uh, mechanized tools, I don't worry about it so much. But uh, you're better off uh, being safer than sorry. Um, the, the next basic one is knowing your tools, knowing that your tools have been maintained and that they're clean. Your tools have blades that are intended for cutting things. So you don't want to cut yourself, of course. If you do accidentally cut yourself, you don't want to cut yourself with a blade that's rusty, where you're going to need shots now, um, or with a blade that's dirty, where you might cause yourself a, another type of infection. So um, make sure everything's clean and well-maintained. Uh, blades that are loose, the, the pivot connection, um, like right here, if, it, if it's loose, that's actually more dangerous. Um, it's more likely that you'll have an accident. So you wanna make sure things are well-maintained. Um, and the last one, and the thing that people uh, are less aware or familiar with is making sure you have the right tool and right size of tool for the job you're doing. So this is a standard set of gardening shears or pruners. Um, I don't know why we call it a set when it's just one thing. Um, it's kind of like the word scissors seems plural. For, it's not a scissor, it's scissors. I don't know, maybe it's because there's multiple levers and wedges, I, I don't know. But this is a basic set of pruning shears. Um, so this particular one, um, this size is meant to be held in your hand. It has a locking mechanism so it will stay closed when you don't want it to be open. Um, and this can be used for pretty much anything that you might have in like a container garden 
for pruning and harvesting things like tomatoes, okra, stuff like that. Um, but it's not going to work real well on branches um, of something like this bush that are in closer to the main trunk. It's not big enough. So um, I'm going to show you a couple of my other tools. This one, this is the same shape. It has the same cutting mechanism and it's almost the same size. Um, it's a slightly different angle or curve that the blade has. It's, it's a little bit less flat. Um, and instead of being intended to hold in your hand and use kind of more like scissors, it is intended to be used with your arms. The handles are much longer. Okay. So the, it's, it's going to cut larger branches. Likewise, this one. This one can actually handle even larger branches than this one. Um, notice the handles are a lot longer. The blade is really not different. The blade is about the same size, okay? So the difference here is the length of the handles. The reason that that works better is that you have basically two levers. When you're, when you're working with a pair of pruning shears, you have two levers. There's this lever and this lever. So in simple mechanics, you will learn about something called mechanical advantage. The longer you, the distance you have from the fulcrum for your lever, where it pivots, um, the more mechanical advantage you have. Now this won't work in a physics class, but the shorthand version of thinking of this is the longer the handle, the more, um, the more force you're applying ish. Okay. But it's a good way to think about it. So, um, this can cut larger branches than the little handheld one and the longer handle here can cut even larger branches than this one can. Okay. Now in the video of me pruning this bush, you will notice I really only use this and the handheld one because that's all I need. This would be overkill and it becomes a little awkward because the handles are so long. It would be overkill. Okay. Um, this one has a special blade at the top. It's a special different shape. This is actually meant for cutting tree branches, small tree branches, but tree branches nonetheless. So it can handle a slightly larger size than the last one I held up, but I don't know that you can ever really get, see this one, this one isn't quite two inches. I don't know that you can ever really get larger than a two inch branch with pruning shears like that. Um, and two inches meaning two inch circumference. Um, so then at that point, you start to need things like a saw. Um, and so just to show you really quick, again, different tools are meant for different sizes. So um, these two blades, they're gonna look like they're pretty much the same thing, but one of them has larger teeth than the other. So if I hold them up close, here. See, the, this one has smaller teeth than this one. So this one is meant for smaller branches than this one even. So um, know what tool you're using and use the proper size. If you're using something that is intended for something smaller than what you're cutting, you're much more likely to slip and wind up accidentally cutting yourself. Um, also, if you're not 18 yet, check with your parents. Make sure they're comfortable with you doing the pruning job you're doing. Do the pruning job you're doing with them around so they can see what you're doing and make sure and know you're safe. I don't want anybody to get injured. Okay, so that's, that's the first thing when you're pruning, safety. And there are a lot of parts of safety, but that's definitely the most important thing. The next thing and the least important is shape. Okay, so this, this bush, obviously I'm not trying to get like a box shape. It's not a hedge. I'm not making a very formal shape. 
all I'm doing with this bush is clearing out the bottom so that wildlife can't hide under there, first of all. And secondly, to allow for the shade that it casts on the things that are north of it to only be dappled shade rather than full complete shade. This allows some sunlight to get down underneath it, whereas before that wasn't the case. So shape is really only what you are aiming for. If you're pruning something along a pathway and all you care about is that people be able to walk on that pathway safely without getting caught up in the bush or tripping over it, then you might just prune it straight up along the pathway. If you want it to look like a ball, now the shape matters a little more to you. You're actually aiming for a specific shape, okay? But shape is only as important in this circumstance as shape is important to you. Um, topiary, being able to make like sculptures out of your hedges um, or ivy or whatever it is, that is a whole art form. Bonsai involves a lot of pruning where you are concerned about shape. That is an art form, um, and I can't teach you that in this one quick video. It's already going to be a longer than usual video. But um, shape is only as important as you make it. So if you're cutting something and you're going for a specific shape, awesome. Give it a try, enjoy it, but don't be too hard on yourself if it isn't exactly what you were imagining it to be. We are working with living things. They're not going to cooperate exactly how we want them to every time. Okay, so that's the first thing to think about. Um, and I'm just gonna move the camera like this a little bit. Here we go. Sorry about that. I wanna make sure that the, the sun isn't behind me. Okay, so um, now that we've talked about tools and safety and shape, the remaining two things are actually gonna be quicker. Um, so the remaining two things to concern yourself about are the point of cut and the angle of cut. So the point of cut, what you want to think about is those nodes and internodes. So we talked about nodes and how to find nodes when we did, did um, vegetative propagation. So remember we talked about how branches will have the little bumps where there's going to be a bud for the next leaf or branch or where you can get it to, you can force it to, to make roots um, on a lot of plants, not all of them. Okay, so uh, if you look at this bush, sorry, <laughs> this bush that you can see me pruning in the video, in the time-lapse video, um, you can perhaps see some branches down here at the bottom that I cut away. When I did that, I left space for there to be a node or two. So um, you, if you cut all the way back where there aren't any nodes left, then that branch will not regrow in any shape or form. The branch isn't gonna regrow uh, anyway, but I could, with the nodes there, I could at least have new growth in that area. So if I don't like something about the shape I made, that regrowth allows me another chance later after that growth has occurred. So um, I can fix it. Okay, so if you want to prune for specific shape or you, you don't wanna just totally cut it where it won't grow back, um, make sure that there's at least a couple of nodes left between where you're cutting and the next branch back or the ne or where the trunk is, um, the main growth point. If you are trying to cut it where you do not want that spot to grow back ever again, then make sure you get below the last node. Okay, so that's a uh, node cut location. The final one is cut the angle of the cut. So a lot of people will tell you, make your cuts at 45 degree angles. So what that means is, if this is my branch, 90 degrees is an exact plus to the branch, okay? That's perpendicular. 45 degrees is half of that. So 45, if my branch is going straight up and down like this, 45 degrees could be like this, or it could be like this, okay? Either of those. 
So now, if my branch is growing kind of off at an angle like this, and I cut at 45 degrees to this, that's actually about like that. The problem with that is that there are times where your cut might actually be horizontal to rainfall, for example, or the ground or whatever, horizontal to gravity. Okay, so if my cut is horizontal to gravity, the problem is now the rainwater can sit on the cut. And that is when you are likely to have problems with fungal infections in your bush, uh, particularly if you live in a high humidity area. So I prefer not to teach people to cut at 45 degree angles, but instead to cut in such a way that they're creating um, an overhang. So if this is my branch and I want to trim this part of my branch off, I'm going to cut it at like the opposite, right? So I want to cut it at like this angle. Okay, so that's actually still 45 degrees, but I'm leaving the top part now overhangs the bottom part of the cut. So the cut actually has like a little miniature roof sticking out over it and then that allows the water to drain away um, if any water gets there and even protects it so that hopefully water isn't landing there and the 45 degree angle thing you really don't have to be that particular um, you're gonna waste time worrying about it and measuring it and trying to really be precise if you're worried about being precise so when you're pruning safety location of cut Make it on the internode above the last node, at least. Okay, you can make it above the fifth or sixth or tenth node. I don't care, but you want to leave at least one to two nodes so that you can fix mistakes later. So, uh, placement of cut, safety is the most important one. Angle of cut, just aim that water can't sit on the cut. That's all you're really worried about aiming for no water to be able to sit there, okay? And preferably even get there in the first place. And of course, shape, okay? Because that's usually why people are pruning, is for shape. Um, enjoy your pruning adventures. I hope this was helpful and not overly long. Talk to you guys later.